Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Samuel Oviedo, and I work for the Department of Planning and Urban Design. I have um, my supervisor, Karen Riley, with us here today to answer any questions that you all may have during the presentation. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Uh, so today's presentation is Ask an Expert for Dallas Community Workshop. So we'll just kind of jump into it. So first of all, what is planning and urban design? So our department is to advance livability, economic vibrancy, sustainability, sustainability and equity throughout Dallas. Some of the services that we provide are through developing and facilitating citywide neighborhood comprehensive, comprehensive plans, sort of like the one that we're gonna learn about today. Also, we have a couple that are um, in place like West Oak Cliff area plan and then the East Oak Cliff area plan and then South Dallas as well. We facilitate neighborhood revitalization in targeted neighborhoods, and then we build and stre strengthen neighborhood associations. So what is land use? Uh, land use is a system of organizing the use of land to meet the occupant's needs. So really what that means is just how do we use land? What do we use it for? Is it to build homes? Is it to fill stuff with retail or industrial or agriculture? And we'll have some examples uh, in the presentation as we continue. So what is land use? Uh, land can be used in many ways. So the first one is just open space, open concept that's like green greenery. We have residential neighborhood that's like the where we a lot of us live just like in neighborhoods. We have urban neighborhoods um, and that's kind of like a mix of like apartment complexes. And then we have mixed use and that can be areas like Trinity Grove. So there's like restaurants and then like living spaces to the top. We have industrial uh, and that could be like warehouses, uh, factories. Uh, there's a lot over there like by Crocker Hill area. Uh, the business center, um, and that can be well, like shopping centers and stuff, commercial centers, like the Galleria. We have campus special purpose, and that can be like Parkland or the medical district. Transit centers, like the one at Parkland Hospital or, or like Mockingbird Station or uh, West End uh, Union Station. We have Urban Core downtown, and that's like downtown Dallas. So so these are the many ways in which land can be used and the ways that we can use the land and say how we want the land to be used. So why does it matter? So land use policy can influence zoning change requests. So we'll learn what zoning is uh, in the later on in the presentation, but this is transportation demand, transportation choices, neighborhood character, economic opportunities. And what that means is you kind of get to shape what your neighborhood looks like and what it is used for and what kind of things are there. So if you want an area with more residential, you want, to make sure that the policy in that area only allows for residential growth. But if you wanna have mixed use, you wanna make sure that you're able to have things in place that would allow you to create um, stores or shopping centers or things that you want closer to your area. So we've had many plans throughout, uh, I guess, in the city of Dallas, but the one that we're focusing on now is called Forward Dallas Comprehensive Land Use Update. And so what is different about this plan? The first, one of the things that's really cool is that the plan is guided by you, the residents and stakeholders of Dallas, because who better to tell us what they want the land to look like than people who are using it. Uh, we want to create a future use map that will guide zoning decisions. So when you guys tell us we want more residential, we can change zoning so that we make sure that only that kind of land is used for those purposes. Uh, we clear implementation strategy and timeline to eliminate disparities of zoning and land use. And we'll get a little bit more into that about how we're implementing and where we are in the timeline of the Forward Dallas Comprehensive Land Use Plan update process. So what is Forward Dallas? It's a unified vision for future land use. So like I said, this is gonna shape what the next 20 years of Dallas will look like. So whatever you don't have access to now, if you wanna have it in 20 years, it's time for you to kind of speak up because you guys will tell us what the land will look like. Um, it also integrates existing city planning. So it already has things that have been worked or are working in other area plans that we can uh, grow upon. And it also outlines specific goals, strategies, and actions and establishes priorities. And that's kind of like what we'll learn about today. So the timeline, um, right now we are in March of 2022. So we are in the scenario visioning, which is forming the vision of Dallas's future together with the community and key stakeholders, which is kind of what brings us here to this meeting. Uh, you guys are the community and key stakeholders because you all live in Dallas. So we're trying to do a lot of engagement and we have things for you. We'll tell you which ways you can get involved and get your communities involved so that you all can be a part of the process. But that's where we are now is where we're 
trying to form what the city of Dallas will look like for the next 20 years with you all. So this is kind of what Dallas is already being used for. And it has like the, um, you can see on the map, like what, like how much the population. So this is how much parks and open space we have in the city of Dallas, um, utility and special purpose. Residential covers a big part and then commercial also covers a major part of what we use our land for already in Dallas and then industrial. So this is kind of where we uh, dive into, um, I guess the, the interactive part of this meeting is that uh, we wanna know what your five top land use priorities are. So I'm gonna share uh, our worksheet that we have for you all today. And you all can uh, unmute yourselves or just type in the, um, in the chat, but I would want everybody to participate. Let me just pull it up. So, so identify five land use issues or concerns confronting Dallas. And so again, this could be like sidewalks, this could be like bike lanes, transportation, access to clinics, to grocery stores. Like what are things that in your neighborhood that you feel could be better or make life easier? What don't you have access to? And if you could give us your top five, um, I, how should we, um, I guess, do this? So we have uh, Leo and Samaida. Um, do you guys, can you guys, are they allowed to unmute or can I ask them to unmute? So Sam, this is Karen. I can read the, um, the chat for you. Um, I think Alicia might be working on being able to unmute people, but um, I believe a comment from um, Leo was sidewalks for sure. Um, I think it's Zamaria um, indicated more affordable housing. Also, could you guys tell me like what area of Dallas you live in, whether it's like a zip code or a district or just like if it's like Oak Cliff or what area do you guys live in? We got 75219 and 75240. I know where that is, Amaria. <laughs> That's up near maybe the gallery. I, I used to work up there. Yeah, it's a little expensive this way. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I don't know who was telling me, but apparently like somebody's rent went up like by $400. So it was, it went up to 2100 for a one bedroom. I was like, oh my God. That is insane. Okay, so that's um, that's kind of what we're trying to um, fight again. So, what other areas or what other walkability is we're talking about? Transportation. Okay, perfect. Yeah, walkability. Okay, community gardens. Public transportation. Okay, Alicia, yes, thank you for um, sidewalks. So that's Alicia. Alicia, where do you live? Like what area of Dallas? Yeah, I live in Fall North Dallas. Is there a zip code? There's sidewalks in that area, but I know there are other areas in that neighborhood where they're not. So. Mm. No, this is perfect. Okay. Um, now, although I do live in the Valley View Galleria area, I, um, I'm a CRA analyst um, at a bank here in Dallas, and so I do engage with a lot of LMI communities um, on a regular, and there is definitely need for like grocery stores um, in like those areas like in South Dallas, just anything below 30, they don't have a lot of resources in general um, better connections to dark rail lines. Um, they also, there's, I don't know if you guys seen that uh, WSA, uh, WSAA report that was like really big that hit last year around this time. Um, but there are also like, what, five banks below Interstate 30, so nobody's banking with them. Um, so maybe some type of financial support down um, 
down in that area. <laughs> no, no, this is really good. So I will say, okay, so one thing, let me just one second. So I see trash cleanup initiative. So the trash cleanup initiatives, that's a really good point, Leo. And I think that's one of those things that we also do with our department is trying to get people um, involved with their neighborhood associations. Um, so if you want to um, like give us your email, I can contact you and try to connect you with the neighborhood groups. So you can kind of get started on those cleaning initiatives. And then as far as um, uh, Zamaria, is that correct? I know all you're saying is really good and it's true. And I, okay, so conservation parks, a lot of, there's a lot of disparity and inequity in South Dallas. And I think that's kind of why we're here because whatever we don't have access to now, we won't have access to later. And this is kind of our way to fight inequity and help those who are disenfranchised. So I'm glad that you're speaking up on their behalf because obviously it's you two that are here, but you guys are speaking for what you all see. And that can be millions and millions of people who don't have access to grocery stores or transportation or parks in those areas. And I will email you, Leo. So thank you for that. Um, what other things do you guys uh, would like to see in Dallas more? As far as, um, I guess, uh, infrastructure, um, when are they going to be finished with all this construction <laughs> on all of these uh, interstates and highways? Um, it's like causing extra traffic because, you know, nobody has finished anything. Mm -hmm. So maybe I guess a timeline on when they plan on finishing like updating structure um, and Better, um, better roads in general. I know a lot of people have mentioned like some road diets around the area I live in, um, but I mean, there's a lot of potholes everywhere in general, but especially in my zip code, um, a lot of rickety looking streets, so. <laughs> yeah, um, you can also put your email in the chat if you'd like or send it to me and I can also connect you with those informations because I'm not sure the top of my head. But um, there are answers for you. I just would have to go and look for them. And then I think how you're saying about infrastructure and roads, so like as much as this helps us a lot, like obviously it does take like policy change and it takes us like coming together as a community to voice our thoughts and our concerns and like make sure that we like have power in numbers and that um, there's a lot that we can definitely continue this conversation because there's stuff that we can all do as just being like residents. Um, but no, this is really good. So I guess let's go to the second part and I will email you guys. Oh, wait, hold on. Okay. Okay, access to... And there's a uh, mm. Okay, that's really good. So the second question is of these issues discussed so far, list your top three. So out of all these that we have here, I'll go with Leo first. Leo, what would you say are your top three concerns? Sure, no problem. <laughs> Thank you. 
Sidewalks, okay, perfect, yeah. I'll give you a fourth one later. Yeah. But yes. Okay, so side proposals on how sidewalks and access to grocery stores. Okay, and then for Alicia, we have oh wait, that was I oh I misread. Okay, no, I did. I did get it right. It's affordable housing, infrastructure, and unhoused populations. Uh, yes, it is very difficult to choose just three. And this isn't to say like, okay, so the reason I'm asking you all to like choose the top three isn't because I don't think any of this stuff is not more important than the other. The reason it's to choose top three is because there's a lot obviously that we can always fix and improve upon. And it's just easier to focus on like the very top three that people are concerned about so that we narrow it down and we're not just trying to like do everything all at once we have more of a focused vision. So that's why I'm asking you all to give us like your top three. Um, Leo, it's okay that it's, um, yes, yeah, sidewalk output, infrastructure. I mean, like, that's what I'll put. Yeah, I'll change that to infrastructure because that makes, so we have access to grocery stores. Okay, perfect. Uh, Zamaria, what would, what would be your top three? Sorry, I started typing it, um, but um, so for me, uh, my top three would be affordable housing, um, of course, food security, uh, so grocery stores, um, mm -hmm. and what is my last one? I would say, can you uh, scroll down a little bit? I think I'm missing sure. whatever the one at the bottom. Okay, yeah, and um, I guess, yeah, poverty, so unhoused population. Okay. Um, I yeah. did forget to add something to that first column. Yeah, what would you want to add? Um, so most of the southern sector of Dallas does not have access to internet, um, which I think is important to mention, seeing as we're having a meeting on the internet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm going to... I'm gonna make a mental note for you because um, there's a lot for you to get plugged in for in South Dallas. Um, so that way all these things, um, yeah, I just wanna get you plugged in. Uh, but yes, I don't know if you guys knew, but there was like um, where I, Karen, I believe that they were doing something in district five of giving free internet or the city of Dallas or the county of Dallas was trying to give access to internet to people. But also one thing that's really cool, if you guys don't know, is the library has Wi-Fi hotspots that you can, uh, you can rent out for 30 days also with a laptop. So if you know anybody, that's a great resource that people can take advantage of. Okay. And then Sumar, oh, you found and then um, someone else just joined, correct? Uh, who just joined? Uh, Mary, uh, so we kind of like are talking about what kind of ways that we can improve the city of Dallas, like what people have access and what they don't have access to, whether it be affordable housing or parks and or access to clinics or um, how you want the city to look like, what can make your life and other people's lives easier. Are there any concerns you have in your neighborhood, uh, I didn't like, would you have any five of them that you'd want to express with us today? Um, I live in the White Rock Hills neighborhood and mm -hmm. we seem to have um, a growing number of homeless people in there. Yeah. And I didn't think there was an opportunity to have, like, cause there's a lot of different places in the library. And if there's an opportunity to have some kind of homeless services meet these people's needs or something. I don't know. Um, 
And it's yeah. also right to some, a, a lot of little kids living in apartments. Um, there's somewhat dangerous area. Um, and so I don't know what, you know, kind of programs geared toward that. There's so many so, programs. I mean, it's just a wonderful library. There's so many programs, but. Um, yeah, and as far as like, do, would you say like, would you need, let's say like better sidewalks, more parks? Would you, how would you, what are ways that you feel like we can use the land that we have now to solve some of those issues? Or what do you see like, oh, we obviously have more. Would you say like, oh, we have kids in apartment complexes, but they have nowhere to go because there's no park. So we need a park or we need access to grocery stores or transportation. Like what are some things you feel that we could bring to your neighborhood to alleviate some of the problems that you all are facing? You know, we we have a lot, we're on a creek and all that kind of stuff. So we have a lot of nature and, and the ability to be outside. And there's, there's a couple of grocery stores, but um, I would think it would be some kind of personal care education for these kids or some kind of decision making thing or something that would help them um, not just keep repeating their parents' problems. And sure. So I'm going to put like recreation center as part of like what ways that we can use the land is to create recreation centers for kids. Um, there's a lot of access, a lot of stuff that the city of Dallas has, but there's always like a room to do it. And so having access to recreation centers obviously um, helps helps in that way. And as far as like Leo's comment about unhoused and policy, I don't know if you guys know, but there's a program called the Right Care Program. And it's if anybody's facing like a kind of mental health issue, you can call the Right Program, which isn't the police. And they partner those people with a social worker from Parkland, a therapist, a paramedic and a police officer so that they have long-term um, help and not just like one-off where they like go to jail, but they have long-term care and like, uh, yeah, that's really what it is. It's called the right program. So I can tell you guys more about that um, okay. later. Yes, I can put the chat. <laughs> Let me just look for it. But yeah, it's called the right program. But it's so that, um, People aren't, I guess it goes back to people not being, um, police just weren't handling uh, mental health calls the best. <laughs> so they created this program. And I'm gonna put the link that we have for the city of Dallas and you all can kind of do more research on that. And of course, y'all can always reach out to me and I can better connect you all, but I wonder if there's like a number. Sorry, I'm like looking online and then this is another. Okay, so um, you just one second. I put them on there, that's a right care program. Perfect. Um, okay, so Mary, uh, some of the folks on the call have already kind of listed some of the things that um, they have concerns about that they want to put into the land use uh, for us to focus on when we're creating this land use. Uh, from these, what would you say are your top three? I'm going to put unhoused because that seems to be big. Where's, oh, here's the list. Hmm. These are nice suggestions. Yeah, so I put in house for you, but you can obviously choose either two or any three. Okay, yeah, it, um, house, yeah. There's area there available for a, a community garden if somebody that was an interest. Okay. Mm 
Oh. Okay, there we go. Um, well, do you have another one that you would like to focus on or that you feel like is important? Oh, I think it has it has public it has transportation and sidewalks and it's got a lot going for it. Okay. Um, but I I did I would note though that I get a, a like a monthly report on registered sex offenders in that apartment complex that is right in that same area. It has like four or five registered sex offenders there. Um, mm -hmm. And I don't know how that plays into planning, um, if at all. But um, I, I think like security at the library, it's been there for, for COVID and whatnot, but it, I think it's been a good thing. I know that's expensive. Hmm. That's interesting. I never, that's, I'll have to get back to you on that. I'm not sure. <laughs> just a, yeah, it's just something I, I thought, wow, isn't that something? Every time I get this report on that, it is right there next to the library. And I thought, man, that's it. Hmm. So. Okay, sweet. Um, the next question um, is, so I think identify three projects or actions that you would like to see undertaken in Dallas to address these issues. So how would you say that? What can the city of Dallas do to help the in-house population? Or what can we do to make sure that housing is affordable? Um, I think making sure that infrastructure and sidewalks, that kind of, I want to say it's self-explanatory, like better roads, right? Access to better sidewalks. We can have like people on, I guess, like the mobile wheelchairs or just walkers can have access to them as well. But if you all could just give me an idea of like how you feel that, what can the city of Dallas do to help the unhoused and to make sure that housing is affordable? What would you, how would you address those issues? Uh, Leo, we can start with you. Okay. Okay. So that's one thing that's really important, like you said, programs. So I'm going to put like access to clinics. So like uh, access to clinics, healthcare, um, city services for, for growth. Um, what else would you guys say? Hmm. There were any programs? Um, so yes, the only program that I can think of at the moment is called the Fresh Start Program, and that's for people who have a criminal uh, background. Um, the people who have like I, I'm not sure the pro. I'm not really. Sure. Yeah, I can look at the link, but it's called the Fresh Start Program, and that's something that we have here in the city of Dallas needs to give people. Yeah, I can put it the link in the chat. And then Elise here from the library says that they offer help with um, resumes. Also, what's really cool with the library is they have access to all of LinkedIn learning. So you can get LinkedIn certificates for free via a library card. Um, and I think back to Leo's point to make sure that people, uh, also getting permission, people, yes. So I think that's also what my department does is uh, help people know what we have. Uh, so we have a neighborhood navigating city services that we had just a couple of weeks ago, and it kind of tells you the services that we provide, but um, Leo's and Mari, I'm going to send you guys emails, and so I can always get, there's more ways for us to all get plugged into your neighborhoods for you all to know what services a city offers, so you guys can take advantage of that as well.
Um, the next question, uh, Mary, did you have any ideas as well of ways that the city can do? I know you said uh, rec uh, creating, you said like rec recreation centers for kids to kind of have with, I guess, like self, um, like with leadership programs, after school programs. Perfect. Um, and then finally, it's kind of for us to kind of know what you like in Dallas and what you all like enjoy about living here. So what are the primary strengths and assets of Dallas, do you think? I definitely think that we have, um, we still have a little bit of diversity in culture and art. Um, because of gentrification, it has, you know, waned a little bit, but I think we can always get back to that, um, that great thing. Yeah, that's so good. What else would you say, guys? Mm. Uh, Mary. She's still in here. Mad, did she just kind of like come on? I'm so sorry. I did not get that update on the Zoom link. And I was punting the whole time. And so that's why I was late. And I feel ridiculous trying to comment on something that I was 30 no. minutes late in. Um, no, by all means. I, I can refresh. I think everyone's kind of been really kind on this call. So that's really sweet. Um, just to kind of clue you in, the main thing about Forward Dollars is we're shaping what the city of Dallas will look like for the next 20 years. And my main purpose is to fight inequity and help those who are disenfranchised. And whatever access you don't have now, we want to make sure that people have it in 20 years. Um, so what would you say are like ways that we can use land and where, where, what area of Dallas do you live in? Well, so I am, um, I, 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 I live in North Dallas, far North Dallas. I have been a lifetime resident of Dallas and I'm currently, um, uh, heading the housing interest group for the league of women voters. Um, and I, and I'm also the chair of housing in Texas for the league of women voters in, in trying to get legislation for, affordable housing passed, you know, supporting that type of legislation. So I, I had that's just awesome. run across, huh? Oh, I said, that's awesome. I, a lot of the main concerns people have on this call are about affordable housing. So I bet that they're really glad you're here. <laughs> okay. So I, I cannot recall at this point where I heard about y'all or, but, but obviously I thought, oh, I need to find out what they're doing. Um, and, and how we might be, a, our, our group, uh, focuses on uh, looking for advocacy issues that we can um, gather, you know, support around and, and bring awareness to uh, on housing interests. Um, and we had been looking, focusing on the voucher process for mm -hmm. through the Dallas Housing Authority. And we, we didn't feel like we were that we had the right tools to be successful in that because it's a federal housing program and it was it would involve so many different things that we we said you know what let's let's go back to the bare bones and let's start looking at so so we've been talking with the city council people on the housing uh group um in dallas on the dallas city council who recently did the racial um um or i guess just the the equity uh, 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 hired the consultants to do the equity analysis that was so dismal <laughs> when they came mm -hmm. back and told the city of Dallas, you just really, if you really have low marks for what you've done the last 150 years. Uh, mm -hmm. So if I understand it correctly, your group, Forward Dallas, are you a consulting group that's hired by the city of Dallas? No, so we are the city of Dallas. So I'm part of the planning and urban design department. And okay. it's our land, it's our land use plan. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, great. Well, mm -hmm. then my my part on Dallas is that I applaud everyone who is 
uh, trying to bring presence to the uh, the the infrastructure issues in the in the areas that aren't well developed, the the other problems that are lending itself to the to the housing problems, and mm -hmm. uh, just we're just doing our best to see what City of Dallas is doing and support y'all and see where else we might can can plug in so that's awesome so yeah um, definitely do put your email in the chat and I will reach out to you because of that okay um, great so you named infrastructure and by infrastructure do you mean roads or what do you kind of mean by that yeah I attended most of those town halls when um uh, Casey Thomas was presenting that consultants report and they were getting feedback mm -hmm. uh and it just came up over and over and in that recent SMU study made it very mm -hmm. clear, I think, that you cannot expect to build housing. Let's just say your basic purpose is to build housing. You can't possibly expect to build housing in areas that don't have the basic infrastructure. They don't have roads, sidewalks, good street lighting. Um, mm -hmm. uh, it, it just impacts everything. Good water, uh, you know, so many of our residents still don't even, they're not even connected to city water. So that it has to be yeah. developed at the same time that you're just talking about developing a plot of land. I mean, that's, Fair. that are, is our thought process anyway. Yes, or the yeah. water is poor quality. Yeah, no, that's actually a really good point. So that's one of the things that we are kind of, um, that's what we're trying to find out, like what is working, what's not working, like what areas of Dallas, because like, um, so there's only certain places you can do certain things at because of zoning, right? So if it's zoned for, a per so if it's for a specific purpose, you can't do anything aside from that purpose. But if you all are telling us like, hey, we actually want more of this, then we can go in and say what's not allowing us to do that. Is it this? Or is it these um, restrictions? And then going about changing those restrictions that we can put in what people actually want, uh, because obviously, like things were put in place in the past that have kind of put certain people at a disadvantage, and it's our uh -huh. way of kind of like righting that wrong by y'all letting us know. Well, we don't have access to this because I'm like, oh well. And then us doing the work as to why not and how do we bring that there. So thank you for sharing that with me. Um, what would you say is like the three major concerns that you have that we should focus on? Um, would it be infrastructure? Well, well, yeah, and of course you're talking about your your main focus is on land use. Is that yes, right? Yes, correct. So okay, it, it so, really is. Oh, go ahead. I'm listening. That's okay. So having been a real estate lawyer for 40 years, you're right. Mm -hmm. The zoning restrictions is number one, right? And mm -hmm. the city has to drive that. If if developers are saying I'd love to do this, but I can't because of the zoning, uh, then then that's that's great that the city would start looking at that and talking about you know doing uh, uh, rezoning with different pockets. But I guess I'm not as familiar with, with land use issues. I didn't know that that was a problem. I didn't know that, that developers were saying, oh, I wish I could develop that plot of land. I just can't because it's zoned industrial. Um, obviously, if that's a restriction, then yeah, I'd, I'd highly support getting behind trying to see where are our zoning uh, maps um, where are they actually forcing the continued mm -hmm. uh, non-development of housing in certain areas and promoting more development of industrial and uh, heavy chemical use and that kind of thing? If that's going in those areas, then yeah, I'd support looking at, at restructuring that zoning. But, mm -hmm. but, but the overall infrastructure, like you said, that, that would be number one, I would think that that would have to be done. Um, the, the second thing, I guess, is uh, there seems to be a, a bad, uh, we, we, we talk about not in your backyard all the time, but, but I, I, I was looking recently, it occurred to me and this other, I'm not actually coming up with this, obviously I've read it about with other people, but there seems to be some kind of problem with saying, well, if the developer's gonna make a lot of money doing it, then I'm not in favor of it, right? Mm -hmm. but, isn't that the point? Don't we want to make it such that it's not charity to build a housing development that accepts uh, vouchers or accepts subsidies or accepts uh, tax uh, 
uh, uh, well, I can't think of the name of the uh, that districts that, that they get tax money back on it or exempt. Mm -hmm. um, but a TIF, sorry. Um, but 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 isn't I that the point? Um, housing tax credit. Yes, yes, the tax credit. Isn't it the point that we don't want it to be a, a design of a structure of charity uh, mm -hmm. development? We want it to be a, a robust development program that people want to do it. Uh, no, I'm not talking about gentrification. I'm talking about uh, quality, safe, affordable housing that is offered to all. Uh, so many of the landlords who will even accept vouchers right now, uh, first of all, they'll do it for 20 years when they're required to, to meet the tax uh, regulations, and then they drop it as soon as they can. But the ones who do accept vouchers are typically the ones who are not good landlords. They, they just, they, they do not maintain quality, safe developments. So I, I, I'm not... Uh, let's see, it, it is an issue in many, yes, it is. And another mm -hmm. issue <laughs> that if the urban land use could just, just, just address this one thing, there are so many homeowners in Dallas who do not have a homestead exemption because they don't have clear title to their house. Mm -hmm. It's a mm -hmm. family property that was bought years ago and I have actually represented several African-Americans, not in Dallas, but in different areas where they didn't get title. Their grandfather mm -hmm. bought the property, but he never got title because African-Americans didn't get title in Texas back then. And so right. now they're faced with, we'll prove you own it and we'll give you a homestead uh, exemption. So mm -hmm. even that, just a simple process like that, they're being crossed out of their neighborhoods because the, the gentrification going on is causing right. those homes to increase in value and they can't get a homestead exemption. I understand there was a program for a while in Dallas where they were helping with those issues and they had some attorneys and some funding, but I don't, I don't, I don't know if that program still exists. It was one of those 13 programs that was listed that it, it deals with housing. But, but gosh, if, if, if that's the case, if we have people who have lived in those houses and who paid their taxes and who uh, are, are, are good working people in those neighborhoods and mm -hmm. they're being displaced and forced out of the neighborhood because they can't afford the property taxes but because they can't even prove they own the house that's a that's a, a big problem so mm -hmm. no agreed I am um, so I'm going to go back to the presentation because I think you all are making really good points um, and so thank you for sharing all that so how is it that we can I guess, make the change that we wanna see. And a lot of it is by attending meetings like this, so taking the survey, which we will have access, we'll, I'll give you, you'll have it at the end of the presentation, but we'll also send this presentation to you all and you'll have access to the survey, so share it with everyone you know. Uh, Pop-up events, uh, visioning meetings, focus groups, and virtual town halls. And we'll kind of go into detail a little bit more the presentation. So one thing that we are doing part of planning and urban design is you can invite myself and other people of staff to come and talk about what Forward Dallas is and as you know and kind of like get people to participate. But in that we also do workshops. So like I said earlier, we have a workshop called Navigating City Services. And so you all who send me your email, you can tell me like what your concerns are and we can always send you information as to like we can connect you with the neighborhood group. Uh, give you access to, I guess, because knowledge is power. And that's essentially all I can kind of promise and do for you all is give you um, the knowledge and access and kind of tell you all um, so you guys can bring about that change. And we have several ways of doing that. So you can check out our website to learn more. You can sign up for our email signups sign and then take the survey. So this is a QR code for the survey. If you guys have your phones, you can pull it up now. Uh, but we'll also send this presentation, but we really would like if you all uh, filled out the survey. It's asking the same kind of questions that we asked, except that it's like, it goes direct. I mean, this will also go directly, but it's just, um, we're also tracking that type of engagement as well. And then you can also follow us on our social media, but I'll leave this up. But I guess, um, let me continue. Uh, 
So Forward Dallas does not have an Instagram, but Planning and Urban Design does, and we talk about Forward Dallas there. Uh, okay, so Madge put her email. No, thank you. It's okay. I, I think it's good to like speak about what goes on. I think a lot of times we live kind of like in silos and we kind of forget that like a lot of communities face the same type of issues that we face. And one thing that's really important is to come together, not just as like residents, but staff and residents to bring about that change, right? Like I'm in my position because of, I guess, for qualifications, but you are supposed to be there to hold me accountable and make sure that I'm doing my job and that I'm serving you all. And so it's good to know that um, you all are, I guess that, yeah, it's good to just share. And, and that way people have the same issues about affordable housing. So like there's connections to be made here and then there's power in numbers as you all come together. So it's really good that you all shared. Um, and also thank you to Match for being so open <laughs> to be contacted, even if people disagreed or wanted to educate. I think that's really important. So I guess now, I guess that's kind of our presentation. Uh, thank you so much for joining today. The floor is open. Um, we have a couple of minutes. Uh, so if you guys had any questions or want to just continue the conversation, we can do that as well. And Karen raised her hand. So Karen, um, yes. <laughs> Hi, good afternoon to everyone. Um, as I wrote in the chat, um, I just want to thank you all. Um, as I said, my name is Karen Riley and I am a manager in planning and urban design. Um, Sam is actually on my team. And so kudos to you, Sam, for doing such an outstanding job with this conversation, facilitating it. And thank you to each of you who has participated. Um, as Sam has probably said, we will be uh, taking this information and including it with other uh, with other input that we've received regarding the Forward Dallas uh, Comprehensive Land Use Plan. And um, as we've said, as Sam said, this plan is, um, it, it won't be successful unless we get input just like what we got today. So again, thank you all. I appreciate the conversation. Even though I didn't say much, I was listening and uh, saw the very um, detailed notes that Sam was taking in the worksheet. And uh, this information will be placed with all the other input that we've received. So thank you again. Yes, and I just wanted to say that um, obviously all these issues are, I think we all kind of know about like, I don't, I won't say obviously, but I think we know that there's a lot of to undo and to address, like one single issue is can only like, there's only so much, I guess, nothing that I can do, but I mean like once you start peeling back the layers, like, oh, policy, oh, zoning, oh, land use, oh, systemic racism, oh, this, and so I think it's really good that we're having these conversations and and um, I just I just put my email in the chat. So always reach out and uh, ask me your questions and I, I will get back to you all or try to connect you with what I know. And I'm um, the same as Madge, like always be sure to tell me what's going on. Like essentially you all are the eyes and ears of who I'm serving and I can't be everywhere. I only live in the neighborhood that I live in. But, um, I have no idea what's going on in North Dallas or by White Rock. So that's why it's so important for you all to attend these meetings and to tell us what's going on because um, that way I can be aware and we can bring solutions and stuff. But yeah, so any thoughts, everyone? Thank you. Thank you, Sam and Kane, for joining us for this presenting this program. Um, if there are no other comments uh, or questions, does anyone have any other comments or questions they would like to share? One last comment, one last question. One last comment is we will be um, at the library in downtown tomorrow from one to three. Uh, for you all, you guys can come and visit us and like, I guess, get to know us in person, but also ask us any more questions. We will be doing that once a month. So follow us on our social media so you can find out when we'll be doing that. We'll also be trying to partner with other departments so that you guys can kind of meet like it's like PUD and code compliance. It's still in the works, but that's something we want to do. The second thing 
that we have going on is that we will be at the Dallas Museum of Art all next week from, well, from Tuesday to Friday from 11 to 4, where you guys can come and play, learn and make art with us and share with us your thoughts on Forward Dallas. You can bring your families um, and that would be um, really cool for y'all to come and tell everybody. Also, another thing, on March 23rd, we're having the same workshop, but in Spanish. So if you know anybody who is a Spanish speaker, please tell them to join so that they can have their voices heard as well. Um, and so that's, those are the three things. So tomorrow at the library, downtown 6-4 from 1 to 3. The Museum of Art, downtown 11 to 4, Tuesday through Thursday, Tuesday through Friday, and then March 23rd, we have our Spanish version of this workshop. Um, yes. And then social media, it's at Dallas Plan UD. But you'll get a copy of this, um, of this presentation and um, it'll have all that yeah. information as well, but that's our social media. Yes, we'll be sure to share that. Perfect. Well, thank you everybody. This has been really nice. It was my first time hosting this. So <laughs> thank you. I'm really appreciative that this, I, I'm really excited about it. So thank you very much. Okay, um, all I'm saying is a uh, great job and thank you. Any other comments or questions before we end the presentation? Yes, that's it, thank you, Alicia. Yes, thank you, this has been great. Um, Same, really are you gonna be there tomorrow? Able to... 